Section 12.1, the Pi Performance Monitor Interface. See, of the, of the different interfaces for looking at network data, or IT structured data, uh, we tend to spend all of our time in this class on the Performance Monitor Interface. It's the most intuitive, the easiest to use, and the most useful. Uh, it, uh, it's basically for getting performance counters, Windows performance counters, and storing that data as Pi tags, as you'll see in the screen print that follows this page. So there's all types of things that we can get, application statistics, including stuff from Pi. And the limitations are that you can only do 512 of these points. Okay, you can run out of that pretty quickly. Uh, they do have to be on the Pi server. And there can only be one instance running at one time. Now, if you are running the full version, you can monitor multiple computers. And actually, you can do that remotely. So if we look at our picture here, this is the performance counters from Windows, it's those types of things that we're talking about archiving. Things like uh, network usage, uh, bandwidth, and CPU usage, things like that. So let's do a quick exercise. What I'd like to do is go into the Windows Performance tool, and let's just trend a couple of these things. Just to demonstrate how this works, uh, I'm going to go into, uh, let's go into the control panel. And under Control Panel, we'll look at Administrative Tools. Actually, I've got it right here. And we can find a link here called Performance. Let me go into Control Panel here. And let's just look at, uh, uh, let's see, there's our Control Panel. Sorry about that. Here's Administrative Tools, and here's Performance. And so from within here, you know, I can go into uh, this uh, picker here and add Performance Metrics. So let me remove some of these. Oops. And I'm just hitting the delete key to get rid of some of those performance metrics. I'll go ahead and choose add. And from here I can go into the option called or the object called memory. And within memory, there's a very useful um, metric percent committed bytes in use. So this would be an example of one of the performance counters I'd want to look at. Okay. Another one we can look at is under the object called processor. We can look at the total processor time. There we go. And so we're looking now for percent of processor time. This is the amount of the percentage of the CPU that's being used at any given point. So that's the type of data we're trying to retrieve as Pi tags. Well, I can get started by First of all, double checking to make sure my performance monitor interface is actually running. So if I go into operation, I look at Pi services, let's take a look and see if the Pi performance monitor interface is up and running. I can see from this listing it's not currently running, so I can start it from here. Uh, or um, I can also start that from the, uh, from the interface or from the computer on which it's running. This is actually running on the server. So um, using SMT, I can go ahead and start that on the server remotely. Or I could go into the server and do it myself. So that's the performance monitor interface, and it's, it's currently running. So the next step would be to go into this section called IT points. And let's go into performance counters, and let's start creating some performance tags. So if I go into build tags, you'll see a list of those counters that are available. So for example, going into uh, let's go into processor. This is probably the single most common metric people are familiar with. And let's look at percent processor time. We'll look at total processor time. Well, that's it. I select this. I go ahead and choose create tags. And that's it. We've created one tag. It's going to take up to two minutes for that to start getting data. But now the tag exists. That's its name. And that's something I can put in Process Book and start looking at processor time. Now, what I just demonstrated is really the tip of the iceberg, because there's, there's all types of functionality we've built into this by adding templates. See, there, there are hundreds, if not thousands, of counters here. And it's really uh, anybody's opinion as to what counters would be useful for monitoring certain things. Now, what we've tried to do is we've provided our opinion. If you choose Load, you'll see a list of templates. And these are the things that we think are worth monitoring, given the different role you might have. So for example, if you're a manager of a Pi server, you might want to choose this 
open that up and it's going to find all of the tags or all of the performance counters that are of use to the uh, Pi system manager. Uh, if you were managing SQL Server or IIS, you would choose one of these and then it would load those counters. So let me go ahead and choose this. And what you'll see is, well, it's also we're seeing some counters that it could not find. That's interesting. But the ones it did find, you notice, are listed in red there. And so what I can do is choose Apply. We're going to take those counters, put them over here, and at this point I can go ahead and start creating tags based on those counters. So they're very simple, as you can see, to build uh, thousands, hundreds of tags that are monitoring what we would consider the important things here. Now in the previous demonstration I kind of glossed over some of the things on this first page. We went straight to building tags instead. But on the first page there's a couple of things that are worth noting. Uh, first of all, if you're managing the performance monitor interface using ICU, then that interface that you're managing will show up here. And so for example, if I uh, as as I look at these, I can choose which one I would like to build tags for. Are these tags that are going to be scanned on the uh, interface node, like this one, or is this going to be scanned on the home node on the Pi server? So in this case, I'm choosing the one that uses that uh, ID equals one and the point source of the pound symbol. Uh, one benefit of doing that is we can interrogate what the scan classes are and actually put this here instead of using the um, this simply the scan class numbers 1 through X. Now another thing we can do is we can prefix or we can assign a prefix to any of the tag names if we want. That's kind of interesting. Uh, another thing we can do is decide to whether whether to include or not include the machine name in the path. Uh, I would rather not include that. So for example looking at our, uh, let's look at the Pi Archive subsystem and let's look at um, uh, let's look at the uh, let's see, what can we look at here? How about um, the events archive percent, uh, excuse me, arc event calls per second. Yeah, if you look at this, it's, um, it's using the server name as the, or I should say, excuse me, it's using the prefix of the my current server name and I really don't want that in this case, so what I'd like to do is get rid of that machine name. And now when we look at this, it no longer has the machine name. So, you know, if I am if I have many different servers, I may want to do that, but uh, in not, to, not terribly uh, necessary. Okay. Also, uh, we can specify to use the county name as a description. Or uh, if we don't, then we're going to use our own syntax for the description. And then finally we have this substitution. And actually I've already been using that substitution. Uh, let's see if we've gotten that working here. Yeah, what I'd like to do is I'd like to substitute the word SS for the subsystem. Let me see if we can demonstrate that. Did we, are we, did we see that in place here? Yeah, there we go. If you take a look at this Pi Archive SS instead of Pi Archive subsystem. Uh, I just like to have that substitution just because it makes the tag names shorter. So, you know, that those kinds of bells and whistles are obviously up to you. And they don't uh, they don't in any effect of uh, change the data collection at all.